My name is Bram Shork. I'm a senior at Haverford and I've been here since junior camp. I'm Ronan. I'm a junior and I've been at Haverford since fifth grade. In Haverford Materials Group, we are currently developing a open source uh, haptic feedback virtual reality glove. It uses open source design and software, which is what's allowing it to be super accessible to all people. There's some great things that we were able to use, like there was through our ID holders that we were able to purchase a lot for like next to nothing. So we get a lot of the parts we need for a really low cost. The way the glove actually works, there is a strand that goes over each of the knuckles and so it starts um, at the tip of the finger and works its way back until the center of the top of your hand and each of those strings is fed into a potentiometer and so we have five potentiometers on each hand, one for each finger. As you pull on the string, it either winds or unwinds that variable resistor. So essentially what happens is we can measure the current state of that potentiometer and we can tell where it is being turned. So the gloves we are currently building come from a guy named Lucas. Lucas has this YouTube channel and a TikTok account called Lucas VR Tech. And uh, one day I was scrolling through TikTok and I saw this kid using these virtual reality gloves and he said he made the gloves for $22. And I was like, that's crazy. So I went online and looked what he had done. And so he started this open source project that are these virtual reality gloves. We're trying to not only replicate the project that he's built, but uh, in the future expand upon it. So what made us want to do this project was that we kind of just found that at first is a cool, a cool thing that we could do, but we also like we saw it as something that we could make our own. While we didn't come up with the idea, we kind of saw it as we could start off from this like one point and kind of branch off in our own ways. So as we see uh, virtual reality become more and more popular, you see these virtual environments like the metaverse come into play. The need for haptic feedback and for better virtual reality uh, is becoming more and more apparent. So we expect to see a huge need for this in really every aspect of life. When it comes to the use of this, what's great about it is you can use it anywhere. So if somebody really wanted to use it for games, that's a great thing to use it for. But also it'd be really fun to use it in the professional standpoint of like training people how to do things because a lot of the like medical training equipment are very expensive and you don't really have that cheap option. This kind of opens up that cheap option that previously wasn't there. You put on a pair of virtual reality gloves and a headset and all of a sudden now you can feel like you're in another place. This is great for the training side not only for training aids, you can also use these virtual reality gloves to get actual work done. So now you can have an incredibly refined amount of control where you wear one of these haptic feedback gloves and the doctor can make incredibly minute adjustments with his fingers and a robot wherever in the world can respond to these very slight changes. Anything that a human could do in person, uh, we're getting one step closer to be able to do virtually. In the past couple of years, we've started to move away from like the uh, gummy bears or from the silicone or stuff like that. And we've started to move into a variety of new projects, such as this virtual reality glove. The great thing about soft robotics is that while as I'm talking about this one project, we're not limited to that one project. If somebody wanted to join and they wanted to have their own project, they can go out and do that. Like you'll have one central project, but what makes it so great about it is if you have an idea that you want to go after, we want to be able to offer you the tools and everything that you need to go after that project. It's an awesome space for anyone interested, like I mentioned, from electronics, if they want to learn how to program, if they want to learn how to solder, whatever they really want to do, we have an open, clean environment for people to do that. And we also have a lot of kids who know about these types of things and are willing and happy to mentor kids to teach them about it. The more people that we can get involved in STEM and projects like this, it's just the more creators that we have to build cool things and help the world in the future.